Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. My name is Mobby. Quickly, quickly, quickly sitting down after watching the Microsoft 2019 E3 conference. And I want to let you guys know my initial reactions and thoughts about the whole presentation as a whole and the games that are coming out. Now, I wrote down a huge list of games I quickly want to touch upon. There are some things I skipped because I really just had nothing to say about the game. But if you just aren't being caught up with E3, hopefully this gives you a little bit of news as to what's coming and just my thoughts if you are interested. So, um, all of these that I wrote down are pretty much as I'm watching it. So a game pops up, I wrote it down that I'm interested in. Game pops up, I wrote it down. So there's quite a bit here. Let's start. They come out with some trailer of Outer Worlds. This is a totally new IP coming out. And remember, this is all Microsoft stuff. So, you know, think Game Pass, Xbox exclusive type of deals and PC stuff, which we will talk about later. Because that is one of the biggest things to come out of this for me personally. So Outer Worlds, it's pretty much a, a post-apocalyptic uh, type of action RPG. Think of it like um, a kind of a different setting for Fallout. And you kind of got that game. There isn't really much to talk about there. But I'm excited and I can't wait to check that out. Then they came out with another game trailer of something called Bleeding Edge. Um, this is a game that is a 4 on 4 competitive PvP game. It's a shooter game, and the whole time I was thinking, okay, are they gonna, are they trying to copy Overwatch or something like that? It's very vivid in colors, a lot of personality. It seems a little bit more mat on the mature side for the character designs, uh, but uh, yeah, it's a four v four shooter. It, it's gonna have like different modes, obviously, like probably team deathmatch, capture the whatever it decides, but. I'm honestly not too interested in Bleeding Edge, but yeah, that was interesting. <laughs> Next up, uh, they showed another little bit of Ori and the Will of the Wisp. That's a very, very popular franchise. I don't know how many games are in there right now. Maybe one to two games. I haven't played a single one of them, which I should because I really like platforming games. So I'll have to check those out. Next, they came out with one I was not expecting. When it first got shown, it was showing like um, CGI footage and of, of like Minecraft in a story mode setting. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> They're going to come out with yet another Minecraft story game. But no, it's, the, the gameplay changed up and it, you know, the camera turned into an over-the-top view via Diablo-like. So this is pretty much Minecraft Dungeon. And this is a Minecraft Diablo game. You can play with up to four players. It's cool. I think it's awesome. I can't wait to uh, play. They, they showed a lot of stuff like, um, you know, just fighting enemies, running around, picking up loot and equipping your character. So that's going to be sick. Then they showed a little bit of uh, Star Wars Order of the Fallen. Now they showed 15 minutes of gameplay yesterday, pre-E3. I watched a little bit of that. I'm not like super crazy excited for this game, but I am interested in it. The, the graphics are beautiful. And finally, they're coming out the Star Wars game. Star Wars game that's probably not shit. I'm talking to you, Battlefront series um, in the Connect game. Uh, but yeah, this will be fun. This will be interesting. Next up, uh, they came out with a, a horror trailer game. And um, at first thought, I thought it was going to be a new Outlast. The guy walks into, you know, through a forest into a old rickety broken down house of a shed and he pulls up a camera. And I'm like, ooh, Outlast. No, no, no. It turns out to be Blair Witch. It zooms out at the end and then it shows like the Blair Witch symbol. And I knew it was Blair Witch before they even threw the title. I was like, no way they're making this. So that's a first person horror game. And, uh, yeah, they, they even did, like, the thing in the corner where the guy's in the corner, just, like, just like looking there, and then the guy put the camera up. I'm like, oh, that's very reminiscent of Blair Witch. I didn't think they were doing an actual direct um, reference to it, so that's funny. Then they showed a really, really long CGI um, trailer for a Cyberpunk 2077. 2077. God dang. I, I don't think we've seen any direct gameplay. It's, at least I haven't. But, my God, the game's story... And world building seems to be just on a next level. It's so sick. And at the very end of the five second, like the very five last five seconds, um, the main character that you're seeing gets like greeted with a cyberpunk version of Keanu Reeves, his likeliness. And then uh, he comes out on the stage, Keanu Reeves. He's here to E3. He's like, oh, I'm going to talk to you guys about cyberpunk 2077. And it was, it's so sick. So cool. 
I like that. Uh, then they showed a small little indie game called Spirit Fairer. It's a 2D, really, um, uh, how do I say this? Sprite like 2D game, pretty, um, pretty light sort of game. And uh, I don't know what to say about that one. Look it up if you want. Um, some keywords that they showed in the trailer was explore, build, learn how to say goodbye. So it's like a emotional, fun, story based 2D where you, uh, 2D adventure where you're on this boat and then you just go on an adventure. And then next up, <laughs> they started the trailer with black, like blacked out screen. And then you hear bump, 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 bump. And then I was, I knew right away. I was like, that's Battletoads. And when you press start in the original Battletoads, the music is playing. And that's the music that was coming out here. So they came out. Uh, it's, I guess it's a remake or a reboot of the series. It's pretty cool. It's a, it's a beat-em-up game. You guys never heard of it. Old, it, was like, it was like a lot of different versions of it. It was Battletoads, Battletoads, and Dungeons. Um, sorry, and Double Dragon and that sort of thing. Really cool game. I like, I like this new art style that they're going for. And I saw the Turbo Tunnel. Rather than having a 2D Turbo Tunnel, they have a, a front-on view. So it should be easier. Uh, so yeah, that's going to be a fun one. I'll probably play through that one. And um, this is probably the game I know I probably know like the least of that I want to. This one new this new one called a uh, Rig Time: The Legend of the Right, Legend of Right. It's a very like oh, I don't even know how to say this. It's very picture book esque um, RPG like old school retro inspired paper and pen. I know I sound crazy, but that's pretty much all I can get out of it. It's insane. So you have to look that one up yourself. And then they came out with a huge, huge announcement with I, I was I was really excited for. They came out with a Game Pass on PC, and it's out today. You can check out the beta. So pretty much they have Game Pass, Game Pass Ultimate. So I love Game Pass so much, but I just don't want to be plugged in my Xbox all the time. But now you can do it on PC. And I'm so happy because guess what? We can I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna sign up like after I'm done recording this as I'm uploading it. I'm gonna I'm gonna sign up right away for Game Pass and we're gonna stream and play tons of games. They have the um, just like Halo, Gears of War, tons and tons of games. Game Pass is so worth the price, especially if you play those games. Like Sea of Thieves when it first came out. Game Pass, you can play it. State of the Gate, State of the K2, Game Pass, you can play it right away. There's a lot of cool things. So I'm really, really happy that I'm going to be playing lots of new games for you guys from Game Pass. Um, next up, um, Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition was announced. It looks great. I love Age of Empires. It's such a fun little RTS. Um, the last one I did play, or like one of the one of my favorite ones that I did play, was a long, long time ago um, on the Nintendo DS. It was like turn-based um, Age of Empires 2. That was really fun. I remember playing local multiplayer with my girlfriend at the time. That was a fun one. Um, then they showed uh, Psychonauts 2. I'm not invested into this franchise. I do know of it. I know it's awesome. Tim Schafer. I should probably play the first one. But yeah, this one looks cool. A lot of people are excited about it. Then they showed Lego Star Wars. Um, and it said something like, oh, all nine movies all in one game. It's called Lego Star Wars The Rise of the Skywalker. I don't know if it's going to be just... Um, you know, because they have Lego games in the past, Lego Star Wars games specifically as well. I don't know if they're going to just remaster those into this collection or if they're going to have a totally new, you know, a totally new remaster of the whole game just all the way through, which would be cool. You know, once the one all the way to nine, that's actually pretty interesting. Cool. And then they came out with something. And I'm like, OK, why? I love Dragon Ball Z, but they showed like a trailer that looked like Tenkaichi. It looked like Burst. It looked like uh, Xenoverse and then all of a sudden Dragon Ball Z Project Z or something. I don't know what the heck this is supposed to be. How many times can you make the same game? I don't care if it's the same story. Make a god dang, I don't know, turn-based RPG. You guys might not know this game exists, but check out Dragon Ball Z. I think it was um, um, Return. Okay, it was like uh, Attack of the Saints. It's for the DS. It is a really amazing Dragon Ball Z turn-based JRPG style. We run around the map, random battles, side 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 view. You fight. You can you know play with like you can level up all the characters you want. You can play with like Piccolo, Yamcha, and Krillin at a party and be just as strong and like beat the final game. It's a really fun game. Definitely check it out. It's so good. But yeah, but this Dragon Ball Z one, what the heck? Um, they had a tag in there. What's it? A uh, action RPG. So sure, okay. I just don't know how it's gonna work. But am I really gonna buy another Dragon Ball Z that just covers the same story? That's gonna have the same gameplay as like Tenkaichi? Just, I mean, they just came out with fighters, and that's a huge success, which is why they're doing this now. But it's like, dude, 
the gameplay it okay the gameplay has to be exceptionally new and crazy different i know a lot of people were hating on that one anime compilation one that just came out jump force a lot of people were like saying that's like really bare bones it just it's a lot of graphics but it's bare bones this this gameplay better look good then they came out with another game called 12 minutes um not much there the game's called 12 minutes so i'm assuming you are just replaying over and over and over 12, the 12 minutes and then trying to fix it okay that was a slow indie game next up um another tiny indie game called the way to the woods it seems to be a really journey-esque style game where you play as a deer. I don't know if it's a mom or um, a mother deer and you are guiding a, a smaller doe and you're going through this like uh, post-apocalyptic world, a human world, and you're trying to get back to the woods. Very beautiful, um, really cute, and it seems to be fun. My girlfriend said she really wanted to check it out. So, hey, it's on Game Pass. I might check it out. Dude, Game Pass, I'm not even kidding, dude. Game Pass is going to open up the door to a lot of games for us to play in the future. And a revisit, so I can't wait. Um, next up is Gears of War 5. I'm not going to lie, I've only played maybe Gears of War 2, and only for like 10 minutes. I really need to go and binge the whole franchise, and we have a lot of time. Gears of War does come out, I think, uh, September of this year, so we can go ahead and work towards that. Next up, Dying Light 2, they showed a little bit more um no not really okay maybe like a little bit of gameplay but not really the thing is though i didn't care game dying like two i know i'm gonna get it <laughs> me saying i didn't care sounded wrong i mean like i don't care to see anymore i'm gonna play it i'm gonna buy it dying light one probably one of my most favorite zombie games in terms of like first person parkour a lot of tension and stress and combat and it's pretty good so definitely definitely dying light and um the uh oh, what the hell's it called the one with frank west oh my god these zombie names are all like too close together but yeah that's one of them next uh forza lego speed champion is a dlc that's i think out today it's an expansion where um you know the the lego movie franchise is joined with forza that's gonna help bring a lot of you know younger audience into the game so that's cool i like forza bring it in uh also they showed a state of the k2 a new expansion called Heartland that's out today. Love State of Decay 2. I don't know if I have time to go back and check it out. Besides, it'll probably be like 15 bucks or something, which I can just do Game Pass with, you know? Next off, they show... I was really super crazy excited. They showed off Fantasy Star Online, but I, and then I got disappointed as soon as they showed which Fantasy Star was. I have a Fantasy Star right here. I'm showing it right here. You can barely see it. Right there is a GameCube version, Fantasy Star Online 2, which is pretty much came out on the dreamcast and gamecube and blue burst on the pc then they came out with fantasy star online 2 which was pretty much a japanese sea exclusive type of thing and then i did play that for a while using um translation patches but the games have been out for a long time now and then they're finally bringing it out here in the u.s it's really hard for me to get excited about that i might check it out i love fantasy star a lot it's one of my favorite games of all time Fantasy Star online 2 specifically this game right here so one of my favorites spent hundreds of hours playing with me and my friends co-op um uh, so yeah I'll, i mean i might check it out but uh, i don't know if i'll be playing that long um next up um uh, bandai namco showed up and then they showed a trailer of a new game and honestly it really looked like another like um also one game like, like chrono Ge chrono gear chrono something uh the one with shulk from uh, what's it called? Uh, the one from Shulk from Smash. She was in those games. I forget. Yeah, I totally forget. But it ended up being a new Tales game. My favorite Tales of all times is Tales of Symphonia. I have played another one. I played a Japanese one called Tales of Nakirigiri or Nakiriki 2. Uh, the Japanese one I made. I played a um, in a, a uh, translation. So that's cool. So another new, another new Tales game. I did play the last Tales maybe uh, two generations ago. The, the last two games. But then, now I started to get copyright on YouTube, so I just stopped playing it. So, GG. Um, but yeah, cool. Tales game. I love how it's still going. I love it. Next up, uh, Borderlands 3. Amazing. Can't wait. I'm in the middle of Borderlands 1, which is a crap game. I'm not going to lie. It's good at the time. Does not hold up. Uh, Borderlands 2. We're going to be picking that up again. And if we have time, we'll do like Tales of the Borderlands and the pre-sequel. But definitely we'll be playing 3 when it comes out. Uh, they showed a new little uh, cinematic trailer for Elden Ring. They showed some names. Um, George R. R. Martin and M Miyazaki's world ideas are going together from software. So it's going to be an amazing, hopefully, Dark Souls-ish experience. It's going to be great. That's all I know. Then they showed off Project Scarlet, 
which is pretty much the name, you know, just like Project Scorpio, and that was the Xbox One. Um, this is Project Scarlet, which is going to be their new Xbox. Honestly, they really sort of just kept going with the names. Like, uh, yeah, PS1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's really easy to keep track of. And people who aren't into gaming can buy those games for their family and friends. Be like, oh, do you guys have a PS3? Okay, I'll buy them the PS4. But if you buy an Xbox, it's like, oh, you guys had an Xbox 360. Do I get them the one? That sounds like the first one. Uh, you know, it could be it can be confusing. What they should have done was Xbox. Xbox 360, Xbox 720, Xbox 1440, you know, so on. I think that would have been cool. But who knows what the hell they're going to call this one. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely not going to be Xbox 2. And Xbox 1 was only that dumb little name because they wanted to put everything into one thing. Like, oh, you can do your TV here, all your social media, all your streaming here. Xbox, it's all in the one. And then they pretty much said in this E3 that... You know, we heard you guys. We know we don't want all of that. We just want it to be gaming. So then Xbox One was a little bit of a failure in that regard. They wasted a lot of resources. So I'm glad they're focusing on gaming. We'll see what that even means. And then the final thing that they show that I care to talk about is Halo Infinite. It's cool. Yeah, it's great. I mean, there's not much else to say. It's freaking Halo. If you're excited for it, it's going to come out. But the big thing that they announced is that it's going to be launching the games that have come out with the new console. They said something like, oh, you know, the first Halo came out with uh, as a launch title with with the first xbox so this latest xbox is going to come out with the latest halo so that's pretty cool anyways um i'm just uploading this really really quick next up in a couple hours is going to be the bethesda conference and i'm definitely going to be writing down everything i want to talk about coming back here and letting you letting you guys know exactly what i think and what to expect with the upcoming so yo i wasn't going to do this you know, E3. I did it last year, so I guess I'll do it this year as well. So let me know what you guys think about anything I talked about. Maybe something I didn't talk about. Maybe I was excited for you weren't or the other way around. I can't wait to talk about the other stuff. Thanks for being here. I'll see you guys next time.